Okay, so we're actually going to be doing some exploring of the properties of this unit circle that we've got here. And these circles that I've drawn are basically all have um, a radius of one, and I've put them on some axes where I have the origin at the middle and the centre of the circle. What we've done on some of the previous pages is we've reminded ourselves of some, um, some properties of the graphs. And we've seen that cos theta is how much left or right something is going on this graph. Sine theta was how much up or down it was going. And tan theta was the gradient of the, of the line. So we're going to try and explore this unit circle in a bit more detail, and we're going to try and analyse multiples of 90 degrees. So for this first one that I've got here, I'm actually going to start off at analysing zero degrees. So I'm going to draw in a triangle where the angle is zero degrees. Now at zero degrees, we should be able to see a few different things here. We should see, well, how much up or down is it going? Well, it's not going up or down at all. So sine theta must be zero. And we can also think about what the value of cos theta is. I don't know why I'm saying theta. I actually probably should be saying in here sine of zero and cos of zero. So let's do that instead. <laughs> so cos of zero and sine of zero. Now, the cos of zero degrees is how much is that line going to the right? Well, it's going the whole length of that line, so it is one. And then the tan of zero degrees is saying, well, what is the gradient of that black line that we've got there? Well, the gradient of that black line is zero because it's just flat. So we have sine of zero is zero, cos of zero is one, and tan of zero is also zero. So let's explore some more. Let's just put this, theta is zero degrees. Next time I'm going to explore theta as 90 degrees. So this time I've got the angle coming around is 90 degrees. We should be able to tell some of these properties. Sine theta is how much up or down the line is going. And it's actually going all the way up. So that must mean that the sine of 90 degrees is one because it's going all the way from the origin to the edge of the circle, which is one. You're probably gonna know some of these next bits coming up, but we're still gonna go through them. The cos of 90 degrees is how much left or right this line is going. And it's not going left or right at all. So it's just zero. And then we have our last one, which is the tan of 90 degrees. And now the tan of 90 degrees is saying, what is the gradient of this line? Well, actually, we don't have a way of describe, describing the gradient of vertical lines. So we say that the tan of 90 degrees is um, undefined. And you can think about this, really, because you're doing 1 divided by 0. You're doing 1 divided by 0 because sine is cos sine, sorry, tan is sine divided by cos. So you get 1 divided by 0. And you know when you divide by 0, you get undefined. OK, we're going to keep going around the circle. So we're now going to see what happens if theta is 180 degrees. That means now I'm going to be measuring anti-clockwise from this line 180 degrees so that the line that I'm drawing in is going over here. It is 180 degrees. OK, you should be able to see here that this line is not going up or down at all. So the sine of 180 degrees is zero. This is where it gets a bit more interesting because we're going beyond 90 degrees now. The cos of 180 is just how much it is going to the left or right. But notice in this case, it was going to the right. So we said it was one. This time it is going to the left. And we know that if things are going to the left on this axis, they are negative. So we get that the cos of 180 is negative one. It is going all the way to the left. And then we have the tan of 180 degrees. Well, remember, that's just the gradient of that line, and it's completely flat, so it is zero. We're now going to analyse the last part that we have here, is that if theta is 270 degrees. So 270 degrees, measuring it all the way from the starting line, would come all the way around like this, and I would draw the line in there. So you should pretty much be able to come up with these nice and quick now. Sine theta 
is how much up or down it is going. And it's actually going all the way down. So it is going to be, I don't know why I've written it as theta. Let's change that to Two hundred and seventy. It is going all the way down, so it is minus one. It's negative because it is coming downwards. Okay. We're now going to do cos theta. Well, it's not going left or right at all. So cos of two hundred and seventy is just zero. And then last of all, we have tan. The tan of two hundred and seventy degrees is also undefined. This line is going vertically, which means that the gradient is undefined. Now, if you think about these um, as the, the normal graphs, we actually know this is true. So I'm just going to do a really, really quick sketch of these graphs. So the sine graph looks like this. We know sine of 0 is 0. That's 90. Sine of 90 is 1. Sine of 180 is 0. And sine of 270 is minus 1. Let's just quickly look. So sine of 0 is 0, correct. Sine of 90 is 1. Sine of 0 is, ze sorry, sine of 180 is 0, and sine of 270 is minus 1 that we've got here. Now, actually, you could keep going around the circle here. You could say, what about if it was 360 degrees? Well, if theta was 360 degrees, it would belong with this category, because 360 degrees is the whole angle, and it would land exactly back where it started. And actually, you could with this one, it could go all the way to 450, because 450 would be one loop plus an extra 90. Okay, let's keep going. We're going to keep exploring this unit circle. We're going to analyze some more things here. We're now going to analyze the quadrants in, instead, okay? So instead of analyzing the multiples of 90, we're now going to think about how it behaves in particular areas. We're going to start off thinking about how does it behave in the first quadrant? How does it behave in the second quadrant, the third quadrant, and then the fourth quadrant? I'm going to try and go a little bit quicker here, OK? So this is the angle theta that I've got for this one. Then I've got this theta, this theta. And then this whole way around here is theta. So to begin with, I'm interested in how does it behave when theta is between 0 and 90 degrees? Well, we should be able to spot that sine theta is going upwards, so is positive. We should also be able to spot that cos theta, which is how much it's going to the right or left, is also positive. And we should be able to see that the gradient of this line is positive gradient. So all three of them are positive in that range. This is now for obtuse angles. These are for acute. So between 90 and 180 degrees, we can see sine theta is positive. We can also see whoops, that cos theta is now going to the left, so it is negative. And that tan theta is how sloped this line is. Well, it's sloping downwards, so it is going to be negative. Okay, let's have a look at this one, which is a type of reflex angle. It's now between 180 and 270. Let's see what we've got. So sine theta is how much it is going downwards. And sine theta is going downwards, so it's negative. Cos theta is the left and right. And cos theta is also going to the left, so it's negative. But tan theta is how sloped this line is. And you can see that line is sloping upwards. So tan theta has got a positive gradient. And I'm going to have a look at our last section, which is between 270 and 360 degrees. And I'm going to draw on these same things that I've done before. Sine theta, well, it's going downwards. So it's negative. Cos theta is going to the right. So it's positive. And tan theta is how sloped that line is. So tan theta is a negative slope. So it looks like this. Now, you may see this as something which is called a cast diagram.
and it talks about whether each section, where it's positive and where it's negative. So I'm going to highlight the ones that are positive. For between 0 and 90, all three of them are positive. Between 90 and 180, only sine is positive. Between 180 and 270, only the tan is positive. And between 270 and 360, only the cos is positive. Now, the reason I've just said this thing called a cast diagram is because sometimes you may see a sketch of the quadrants where it says C A S T, cast. And the reason it says that is because A actually stands for all, because all of them in the first quadrant are positive. The S in the second quadrant is just because the sine is positive. The T in the third quadrant is just because the tan is positive. And the C in the fourth quadrant is because only the cos is positive, okay? So this is something I don't use very often. I prefer just thinking about the properties of them, but this is kind of a summary of it. And it's called the cast diagram because it goes C-A-S-T and all of them are positive up here, then just sine, just tan, and just cos. A couple more things we can do on negative, um, on negative angles, and then I'm going to show you a video with some unit circle explorations, and then we're going to do some things for the exercise. Well done for keeping up with all of this. Okay, last thing I need to talk about is if we explore the unit circle, what happens if we have negative angles? So, We've said that the angles are measured in an anti-clockwise direction. If you have a negative angle, you're just going to do the same thing, but go in the opposite direction instead. OK, so I'm going to start thinking about this minus 50 degrees and I'm going to draw it onto the graph. So it's going to be coming backwards now, 50 degrees, because it is negative. Well, there's a few things that we can say about this graph. We can say that the sine is obviously going to be negative. We can also see the cosine is positive. And we can see that the tan, the slope of the line, is also negative. Now, it also happens that in our cast diagram, C, A, S, T, it's landed in the area of C. So the only one that is positive here is cosine. We could say that the cosine of minus 50 is positive. We could say that the sine of minus 50 is obviously going to be negative. And we can say that the tan of minus 50 is also going to be negative because it's landed in this area over here. Now, what about for 120? So minus 120, my mistake, sorry. Let's do this in a different colour. Uh, it's not very different, is it? Let's do a proper different colour. Mm, running out of colours, let's do this dark green. Now I'm going to do it on this diagram. You don't have to draw the circle every time, okay? You can just draw these axes like this. Now, minus 120, it's going to be measured backwards, minus 120. So it won't land in this first quadrant, sorry, not first quadrant, the fourth quadrant. It's actually going to land in the third quadrant that we have over here. This would be the 120 degrees. Now, if you want to do the shortcut, I guess you could say to yourself, OK, well, this is C, A, S, T. Um, the only one that's going to be positive in this quadrant is tan. So tan will be positive. But the cos of minus 120 is going to be negative and the sine of minus 120 is also going to be negative. But I'm going to just show you that again. We can see here that the gradient is positive and we can see that it's going backwards, so that's why the cosine is negative. And we can also see it's going downwards, which is why the sine is negative there. Last one we could think about exploring, minus 270 degrees. Well, minus 270 degrees, let's draw a quick sketch of this. Let's get this as a black line. Now, minus 270, remember that means that we're going backwards. Let's do a different color again, let's do this pink. We're going backwards 270, so that would be 90, 180, 270. So it's actually all the way over here. And we should be able to tell a few things from that one. We should be able to see that sine theta is it's going all the way up. So, whoops, 
sine of minus 270 actually looks like it is exactly 1. Now we can see that the tan of minus 270 is going to be undefined because it's just going vertically upwards and we don't know how to, to write that. Now the cos is how much left or right and it's not going left or right at all there. So the cos of, let's go back, I'm in the wrong colour again, but whatever, the cos of minus 270 is 0. OK, so this is us all exploring these bits here. Now, I actually want to show you how this actually links with the graph. This is one of the most important parts that we've got here. So if you want to have a look at this yourself and play around with it, this is the website that we've got down here. And if you want to just find this, you can search PHET Interactive Unit Circle. And I'm just going to quickly switch across to this. I'm just going to put my keyboard on my iPad so that I can show you what I'm doing a bit better. OK, so when you go and find this website, this is what it comes up with. And what we're going to look at here is how the graph is linked to the unit circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the angle. And remember, sine theta is how tall the, the triangle is. So the length of this arrow is going to correspond to the length of this arrow on the graph. And as I spin this around, you can see that the green arrow is getting longer until eventually it gets to the top. And when it gets to the top, that's when sine of theta is one. And you'll see it still stays positive. As the angle becomes obtuse, it still stays positive. But then when we get to 180 degrees, sine theta is zero because that arrow has become zero. And as you keep going around, the arrow is now going downwards and so it's negative. And you can see down here that it's now going into the negative part of the graph. So I'm just gonna keep this going around so we get to the sine of 270 is minus one. And then when we get back to zero, this is actually the same as sine of 360. Now you can keep going round the graph. So this is gonna be 360 plus 90. This is 450 and it's gone back up again. And this just keeps winding round and round like this. And you can also go backwards. So if I go backwards on the graph, you can see how it goes to minus 90 degrees, minus 180 minus 270, minus 360, and you can see how it links to this bit down here. Okay, let's get this back to zero again. I'm now going to go and have a look at cos. So cos is this a crosswards arrow, and the crosswards arrow, when it's plotted here, has been switched around so that it's now going upwards. So you can imagine kind of like tilting your view of this. Now, as it moves around, you can see that the arrow starts at its longest. It then becomes zero, and then it immediately switches to the negative side as it points to the left. And, and it stays in the negative side for between 90 and 270. And then again, it switches up to the positive side. And this can cycle all the way around and it can just keep going forever and ever and ever. So this is the unit circle. Um, and what you would like, to, what I'd like you to do is really to, to play around with this. Now let's have a look at tan. Now tan is kind of harder. Tan is thinking about the gradient of this line. So the gradient of this line is positive and then it's becoming so steep, kind of goes off the grid. It's such a steep line and then it's undefined at this bit. Suddenly the gradient becomes very, very negative. And then when it gets all the way to 180 degrees again, the gradient is zero, as you can see here. I want to have these labels on. Oh, that might have been helpful to show you a bit about these labels. OK, so have a play around with this. This is how the graph and the unit circle are linked together. Um, you should find some interesting properties as you play around with these. We're now going to go and do some stuff on the exercises and preparing for this. This is a long video, but this is a very, very, very important video. Please play around with this website. I think you'll find it useful.